Hello and welcome to another uh, lesson in microcontroller programming and construction. Uh, today we will be looking at doing some interfacing to a PC uh, using a MAX232 chip, which is an RS232 receiver-transceiver chip that will basically help our PIC to talk to a PC. Now, for those of you that haven't dealt with um, PCs, RS-232 ports, basically the serial port that's on your computer. Uh, this will also work with if you have a more modern computer that has USB and you use like one of those USB to RS-232 uh, cables or converter deals. Uh, this will work with that just as, just as well. Um, one thing that you want to do though, if you do have a USB to RS-232 uh, connector cable, if you don't know what the port is, you can always go to your computer. In fact, here I'll just I'll just show you real fast. You can go to your computer, right click and choose manage. When it comes up, when it, when it comes up basically you can go to the device manager. Here we go. Device manager. And I don't have one plugged into this computer, but basically in here you will see a, it's kind of like this universal serial, but it'll be one that's called, com they'll be called ports, and it looks like a little COM port cable is what it'll look like, and it'll be in this list of things, and you can click on that and expand it out, just kind of like you, you know, you expand something here, and you'll be able to see f what uh, COM port number it gives it, because I know sometimes, uh, depending on different cables, uh, different things, it, when you move it around your USB ports, it'll change the COM port on you. So if you put it in the USB port that's maybe in the back of your computer, it'll be COM port 4, for example. And then if you put it in the USB that's on the front uh, of your computer, it may change it to COM port 3 or something. So just if you don't know uh, specifically what it is um, when you're plugging it in, you can always go to that device manager uh, and check it out and make sure you, you know which port you're going to be dealing with. Save you some headache. Now, um, getting into voltage levels with this, why do we need a transceiver receiver chip? Why do we need that? Well, the reason is the uh, PIC microcontrollers work off of what's called TTL logic, or transistor to transistor logic, which is a 5 volt, 0 volt basis. Basically, a zero uh, logic zero is zero volts or ground, whereas uh, the one, a logic one or a true, is plus 5 volts, so basically on or off, um, 0 and 1. Now, if the computer PCs, most all PCs, use a different type of logic. They use negative 12 volts is a 0, and positive 12 volts is a 1. So you can see where our inherent problem is. If you hook this straight to a PIC micro, since a PIC micro can only deal with uh, 5 volt biasing, then you're basically going to burn up your PIC. And you you send too weak of a signal to the computer for it to pick it up. It, it's, you know, you're sending only 5 volts, which is ne neither negative 12 or positive 12. So you're, you're losing your data and you take a chance on damaging your PIC. So you need a device to go in between that basically does this voltage conversion for you. That's where these little receiver transceiver chips come in that a variety of different people make them. Um, Maxim is just kind of the more widely known one. Most everybody knows what you're talking about when you say a Max 232 chip. Now the other ones that's used is the XR, I think. They they used to be Cypex, if anyone remembers Cypex, but I think there's a company called XR that bought Cypex out and they make them as well. So very widely used thing. I'm just going to show you one of the Maxim uh, data sheets. Basically, um, it gives you all the rundown on uh, all these different types of uh, chips that are available and packages, and just your standard data sheet. You've got your, you know, electrical characteristics and all your different parameters. But the main thing that you're going to focus on in this data sheet, if I can get down to it, is basically how you're going to connect it or the application. See here, here we were showing timings and uh, all that fun stuff. Um, we're going to keep on going though. I'm going to go right on down. The XR1 to get your pin layouts and everything is a little bit quicker. Okay, here we go. 
Okay, so we want to make sure we get our we want the Max 232 chip, you know, which this this pinout covers uh, three different devices, but the main one we want is the 232. This data sheet is for a bunch of different devices, so if you scroll on down, um, you can see there's other devices in here too. But see, we're dealing with the 232 one, so we aren't dealing with that down there. We're looking at this bad boy. So here's your pinouts. Basically, it's just a 16-pin uh, chip. Uh, one nice thing is that they give you the charge pumps is what they're called, but basically you have to have external power that comes into these different ports for this uh, for the different uh, differential amplifiers and things that are inside this to work and the inverters and yeah the voltage doublers and all that fun stuff that's inside this. Well the best way to do that is just use capacitors and per their design you can use casters and they call them charge pumps. So you'll need a capacitor between uh, pins 1 and 3, pins 4 and 5. You'll want to hang a capacitor off of the input voltage just to make sure there's no noise on the signal. You also take um, take pin 2 through a capacitor to high as well as take pin 6 through a capacitor to ground. And that's basically what we'll see, and we'll see that in the uh, in our schematic that we'll, we'll, that I've drawn. But um, but basically you just get your information from right here. And that allows, the, that powers up pretty much everything inside. Once you put your input power on, that pretty much powers up everything inside with those. The best, the one that I've had the most luck with, and if you look down here, if you're wondering what size capacitors to use, it tells you max 232, you're going to want basically one microfarad capacitors, microfarad, uh, across the board. Basically all of these will be one microfarad capacitors. And using uh, other manufacturers, just basically with the 232 receivers, uh, yeah, one farad, one microfarad capacitors work perfectly fine for all the different applications. And that's basically it. Then you come down here to your uh, C and even labels it for you, your TTL CMOS inputs and your TTL CMOS outputs. So this is your inputs and your outputs that go to your chip. Then you've got your RS-232, or basically your PC outputs and inputs, because remember we got to take receive and transmit, you know, both. But this this is nice because you basically have two, um, you can have two ports basically per one chip, so that's kind of nice. You can you can hook up uh, two COM ports if you want to, or uh, in the case of like a bootloader, which we'll get into in later lessons. Uh, in the case of a bootloader, you'll want to hook up the the RTS line uh, that's on serial that will basically flag the flag the chip that uh, data is ready to be sent, and um, or you can pull the DTR line through there. Just you know anything that you want to bring out of that RS-232 port into your chip, you're going to want to run through one of these guys so that that way um, you get the right voltage levels to your chip, and vice versa. So that's basically the rundown of the data sheet. I mean a whole bunch of information for pretty much this basic deal but anyway that's basically all there is to that we're gonna go ahead and jump over here to our schematic oh first let me let me look at this um, we're gonna be switching up chips now we're gonna go with a little more advanced chip um, this is gonna be we're gonna use the 886 chip which is in this family of still 8-bit microcontrollers um, what we're gonna do this one for is because I'm gonna show you a couple different uh, ways of doing this um, through what's called a hardware UART or uh, hopefully I say this right universal asynchronous receiver transceiver I think is what that is what that stands for and so basically it's a hardware serial port basically a serial port that's like built into this chip so that way let me see if I can trying to find the there we go here it is trying to find our block diagram here so basically this port compared to the 676 has a lot or this chip has a lot of a lot of different uh, pins on it. it's a 28 pin chip it's got three port well really four ports of pins on it of IO pins so quite a few that you can deal with and seven each um, and so Basically, but the main thing that this one has is basically the same. You've got your uh, your oscillators, you've got internal oscillators, you've got you know the two pins for the external, you've got um, all, all your timers. Except this this one gives you three timers, which is nice. And then here is your UART 
stuff. And this one actually has E-U-S-A-R-T, which I think that one stands for Enhanced Universal. Uh, and then this one will do Synchronous or Asynchronous Receiver trans Transmitter. Is what I believe that's for. Um, most ones I've worked with is usually UARTs, which are the basic ones. But um, they're basically the same. So what we'll do, but basically the, the whole idea behind a UART, which is nice to have a hardware UART, is because it will actually buffer the information for you. And by, if those of you that don't know what uh, buffering is, um, basically it's got hardware buffers that set in there that when data is present uh, from the PC, let's say, when data comes in from the PC, if your program isn't quite ready for it yet, let's say your, your timing is a little off and the, the computer is not sitting waiting and listening for that data, it still doesn't get missed. It will be stored in the hardware buffer um, for a short amount of time until you're ready to collect it basically and uh, you have to get into the data sheet uh, I don't know if we have enough time to dig through it but you can actually find out what the size of those hardware buffers are and how big and all that stuff so you know